Right then guys, how's it going and welcome back to a new video. I am currently stood outside of the Etihad Stadium, home to Manchester City and we are heading in there on a stadium tour. Now I've done loads of stadium tours on the channel now so be sure to go and check all of them out and I have been here before on a stadium tour. It was around five years ago and it was one of the first tours I posted on this channel. Uh, so I cannot wait to get in there to see if anything's changed and I will post that old video down in the description as well if you guys want to check it out and see what the differences are. Now I know loads of you guys watch my stadium tours but still haven't hit that subscribe button so if that's you please do so. It's thanks to you guys for liking, subscribing and becoming channel members that I am able to come out and do videos like this for you guys. So as always I hope you enjoy it. Let's get in there. Yes guys, how's it going? And welcome back to a new stadium tour here at the Etihad Stadium, home to Manchester City. Since the stadium was opened back in 2002 for the Commonwealth Games, things have changed pretty quickly as it is not just a stadium anymore, it is the Etihad Campus. All around the stadium are bar areas, meetup areas, there's even a brand new music venue being built. And just 400 metres away, directly behind this sign, you will find the Man City Training Academy, home to the men's, women's and youth training, which has a 7,000-seater academy stadium and over 16 indoor and outdoor pitches. We also have the Manchester Regional Arena, which is right next to the stadium and was originally built as a warm-up area for the Commonwealth Games, but is now a multi-purpose stadium for football, rugby and athletics. Next up, let's take a look at something that was not here when I last visited player statues. Starting off with Vincent Company, placed as recently as 2021, the Man City captain was crucial in his 11 years at the club, leading Man City to multiple title wins and honours. And right beside him we have the David Silver statue, also placed in 2021. David spent a full 10 years at the club, helping the team win 14 trophies. And you've got to think, it won't be long before an Aguero statue is stood next to them. Right then, let's get started on this stadium tour. Heading into the club shop and being greeted by a signed Grealish shirt, I had the time for a quick look around before entering the Man City Museum. As you can imagine, there was plenty to see, including a fantastic display dedicated to the Centurion season for hitting 100 points, and the Formidables for winning all four English titles in a single season. As you would expect, they also had a section dedicated to that Sergio Aguero goal, along with plenty of memorabilia and other trophies on display. And as a football stadium fanatic, I was also very impressed by the virtual version of the Etihad Stadium. Before heading over to the stadium, we stopped off in the match day experience room, which was pretty crazy. It was just like standing on the centre spot before a Man City game kicks off. Match day. Ten minutes to kick off the Etihad Stadium, home of the citizens of Global Club. This was followed by some brilliant footage showing Man City through the years right up to the present date. After 44 years, we witnessed a moment in history, the likes of which we may never see again. Right then, let's head over to the stadium and into the Colin Bell stand. The only stand at the A had named after a player, as voted by the Manchester City fans. Inside, we made our way to the Tunnel Club. Now, this has been completely done up since I last visited. And as you can see, is a very nice place to be on a match day and yes it does include seats behind the dugout but even more than that it is also the players entrance the players will make their way through and down to the changing rooms walking along this golden line so you have the chance to see and meet the players before a game time for us to make our way down the stairs and into the away changing rooms 
which as you might imagine was pretty bland and boring with a grey colour scheme. No team colours in here, but I have to say it was a pretty big space for an away changing rooms. A single TV monitor and bench to one side, and each player would have space to hang clothes and a small compartment for boots and trainers. Heading over now to the doctor's room slash away team warm-up area, Man City are one of few teams who provide a warm-up area to the away team, and this is a pretty multifunctional room. You have to think the academy is just 400 metres away, so players can pop back and forward as needed. And you can see why they might want to pop back over to the stadium with this fantastic state-of-the-art home team warm-up area which can be used before games, after games or even on days without a game. Kyle Walker would normally warm up on the bikes, Aguero would use the resistance bands and De Bruyne would usually have little to no warm up before a game. Now then, let's make our way into the home changing room. Not too shabby is it? Some are born here, some are drawn here, but we all call it home. As you would expect, the home changing room is coloured blue and white. Every player has their own seat in the changing room and it is Pep Guardiola who decides where each player sits. And despite there being many players of different nationalities, the language to be spoken in the changing rooms is English only. Every player has a cupboard to hang their clothes along with a space below for boots and trainers and unlike the away changing rooms also have a padded seat to sit on. They also have a space behind their seat which contains a small safe. This changing room is completely different since I last visited, now in a circular shape so that Pep can see every player, a huge screen at the front to help with tactics, and believe it or not it is the same size as the away changing room but set out in a far more efficient layout. Something I had to show you guys is I think it's brilliant but I'm not sure what you would call it, maybe hideable doors? Pep Guardiola asked for this feature to be added so the players can see each other at all times. And before heading out, I did grab myself a quick photo with the Jack Grealish shirt. Between the changing rooms and the tunnel was a projector screen. Now we were not allowed to see behind this screen, but we were told that every Manchester City player has placed a photo of the most inspirational person in their life and this will be the last thing they see before heading out to the pitch. Looking back up at the tunnel club where the players will begin their match day journey, it is now time for the moment you have all been waiting for, our turn to head down the Manchester City tunnel. Noticing the mirrors on either side that we will talk about a little bit later, we make our approach to the pitch side and I have to say, I have done this walk a lot of times at a lot of different stadiums and the feeling is always the same. Fantastic. I will never comprehend how a player must feel on a match day doing it when it really matters. The Etihad Stadium has a capacity of just over 55,000 and something very interesting about the pitch here is that it is 6 metres below ground level. Everything you can see here below the Etihad Stadium sign is below ground level as they made the switch from an athletic stadium to a football stadium it allowed them not only to add 10,000 new seats but also bring the fans closer to the pitch. As a Newcastle fan I grabbed myself a seat in the away dugout, the seat did recline and gave me a bit of a fright but a great view nonetheless and I grabbed a final few photos at pitch side before heading back in to the tunnel club. Back inside now to the lower section of the tunnel club and once again I would not mind having a pint or two in here on a match day. You might remember the mirrors from the players tunnel, well this is what they look like from the other side. Fans are able to see both sets of teams making their way out from the changing rooms to the pitch. 
And if you are lucky enough to get a seat over on the other side of the room, not only will you get to see the players in the tunnel, but you will also get to see the players giving their post-match interviews. Now this has completely changed since I was last here as the boards used to be out by the player tunnel but are now in this corridor where they can be viewed by the fans. And if you get really close up you can just about see inside the other room. And of course I grabbed myself a quick photo by the interview boards as well. Heading into the media room now, this is where the manager or players may give interviews, although a lot of it is now done over at the training ground. We were blessed with an appearance from Pep Guardiola, although a virtual one, it was still good fun, and I was sure to grab myself a photo in the interview chair as well. Stepping back into the stadium to take a quick look at where the journalist and reporters would sit. A very nice seat with a very nice view, along with a mini TV screen to watch along with the games and presumably are able to see the VAR decisions as well. And that my friends is where we end the tour with a final few shots of the stadium and a photo with the trophies. I would like to say a massive thank you to Paul, our tour guide who was brilliant, put up with me for the day and answered all of my questions. A fantastic two hour experience that I have tried to squash down into a 10 minute video. I would honestly recommend for anyone to come down and give the real thing a go. And there you have it guys, the tour over and done with. It was great, it was, it was a great tour. Uh, I remember it being great five years ago, it was great again today. Um, tunnel Club, that's completely new. I mean, it better costs a bit to sit in there, but what an experience it would be watching the players come out, meeting the players. I uh, absolutely love the interactive Pep Guardiola press interview at the end as well, that was fun. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it as well. And as I say, if you are still watching at this point, please be sure to like and subscribe and join and become a channel member as well if you want to support more videos like this, hopefully very soon. Uh, but as always, thank you for watching. Support is appreciated and I'm hoping to have more tours coming soon, as I say. All right, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.